this company is working in developing a brand new source of energy using hydrogen as their primary source. Today, we are joined by Randy Mills, their amazing CEO. Randy, thank you very much for being here with us today and welcome everybody to one more episode of Builder Nation. Pleasure to meet you as well. We are definitely doing something extraordinarily disruptive that no one else in the world isn't anywhere in the game with us. It's totally disruptive. And it definitely solves climate change. It's a real solution. It's not something that'll take trillions of dollars and decades. It's something that can happen very quickly and we're on the precipice of commercialization. All right, perfect. Thank you very much for that very brief introduction to Brilliant Light Power. And honestly, it's amazing. Now, I actually did a little bit of a research into what the company does, how you're developing this new technology, right? The fact that it is commercially competitive, non-polluting, plasma-based sounds incredible, but to all of us that might not be so uh, science savvy, could you please give us an overview of how your device actually works, of how you generate this energy? It's a new chemical process and uh, came out of work I was doing at MIT on free electron lasers. It turns out that there's a body of uh, physics theory called quantum mechanics that's uh, pretty prominent. It's the leading theory for atomic structure and phenomena. And I always had some concerns about it. It turns out that the premise of that theory is that the fundamental laws don't abate on the atomic scale. So we have macroscopic cause and effect and everything's predictable in engineering. It works and it's all exact. There's no uncertainty when you're using engineering formulas and equations and physics, but it's atomic scale. The electrons in singularity, it can't really exist until you measure it. There's a lot of vagaries and non-intuitive aspects of that theory. It turns out that free electron lasers have free electrons and they actually do obey physical laws. And the same is true for synchrotron radiation and other phenomena like plasma dynamics. So I applied those to a certain situation that was where physics diverted from being exact and predictable and understandable, intuitive, to being this pure mathematical construct. And it turns out it does solve essentially everything. The subatomic particle masses, it predicts what the Webb telescope is seeing, which quantum completely has wrong. These epics that they talk about from the singularity beginning, the inverse is not observed. Predicted the acceleration expansion of the cosmos before observing. More fundamentally, it predicts that hydrogen can have more chemically stable states. And by forming those states, you release 200 times the energy of burning hydrogen. So we have a, a plasma, as you say, plasma is a state of matter and comprises electrons and ions, positive charge ions and electrons. And it turns out that there's a type of energy acceptor that will accept a perfect match, the energy that hydrogen has to transfer in order to drop down to this lower state. Rather than absorbing energy with the hydrogen going to an excited state and being ionized as part of plasma, it actually transfers energy to a species in this plasma and it drops down to a more chemically stable form. And that releases 200 times the energy of burning. So you can actually extract hydrogen from water molecules by putting in a small amount of energy. And then rather than burning it back to water, which is no net energy, it actually loses some due to the inefficiencies of producing hydrogen and then burning it uh, back to water. It actually produces 200 times energy burning, making a new state we call hydrina, or meaning smaller hydrogen. The electrons closer to the proton, so the negative charge is closer to the opposite positive charge, and necessarily has to release energy. And according to this theory, that's not possible. I'm not using that theory. I'm using these laws of nature that predict everything our modern society is based on, and it turns out it does predict this. And in fact, we've isolated it and characterized it by 23 spectroscopic methods. So beyond theory, we actually have it in the bottom. We have this new state of hydrogen. We, given the labs, we have the data published on our peer-reviewed publications and on our webpage. You can download it. There's 23 spectroscopic methods that prove this new state of hydrogen is in fact formed. And incidentally, it actually matches the signatures that they ascribe to what they call dark matter. Have you heard of that or not? I definitely have, yeah. Right? It makes up most of the mass of the universe. In particular, there's something called diffuse interstellar bands, 500 spectral lines. These are specific frequencies of light that are absorbed by interstellar media, and they match the rotational spectra of this new form of molecular hydrogen 
that our cell produces. The sun cell is what produces the power. It's a device that was invented as our proprietary technology to harness this new chemistry to generate power. I'd be really happy to describe that and show you because it's working at commercial scale now that has tremendous advantages across the board. Every facet of power production, it's more competitive than anything anyone's ever been aware of or seen or even imagined. Thank you very much for that. Actually, yes, Randy, it's going to be amazing to see. But before we jump into that, I'm actually very curious about something. And it is more about your journey, right? I have to ask, you are an electrical engineer in the background, and you also have training in chemistry, and you're a medical doctor. How on earth did you actually transfer from that academic career path into applied physics, into quantum physics, into energy generation? What brought you here? There's a lot of science in this. This is pretty, it's a pretty broad field. It covers everything from gene splicing, the physiology, the chemistry involved, everything from medicinal chemistry. There's a lot of trying to understand mechanisms. There's a lot of problem solving and it's sucking like a sponge, a massive amount of information. I got involved in imaging systems, new molecular drug delivery design. We're at a chemiluminescent molecule. I actually made myself and synthesized it and connected to a photo chromic molecule and it would release a drug when it went intracellularly because it reacted with free radicals only in the cells and that triggered the photoluminescent reaction and it transferred energy intramolecularly and released the drug. So that energy transfer got me intrigued about these other types of reactions and I ultimately combined that with the physics I learned with MIT on free electron lasers to design this, this hydrino reaction. So there's quite a bit of technology I was working on that culminated in the path that I ended up taking. And there's quite a few technologies I've invented. And I took this one because I was single at the time, but I knew it'd be the hardest thing anybody could imagine taking on, solving everything from particle masses to cosmological predictions. And there's chemistry. This is such a different reaction and there's absolutely nothing known. And theoreticians were saying it was impossible according to their theories, which are now disproven because we've actually isolated this new state of hydrogen and proven it beyond every imaginable technique we could find. We're making massive power. So then there's all the engineering aspects of that. So it took us about $140 million in two decades to do that, which I actually think is light speed compared to the gun, which took 400 years to develop. It does take a tremendous amount of time because there's infinite permutations, different things in different ways you can go. And there's absolutely nothing known about this. The theory, the chemistry, the engineering, every aspect of it had to be developed. And you have to thread a very fine needle because it has to be competitive with fire. No supply chain issues, no toxicity, no exotic materials, extraordinarily expensive, deployable. It's just so many different things that they're involved with that. And we've succeeded. It took a really enormous amount of work and it's here. It's time for people to get with it. It's going to solve the problems we're facing right now. I, and I agree with you, specifically what you said, that 20 years in terms of scientific development, it's not a lot. The world hasn't done it since, what, 2 million years? Humans haven't done it. So it's a long time coming, but it's here. It's all everything from particle masses of cosmology, molecules of balanced extent, complexity, excited electronic states, macromolecular metals, compounds, ionic couples, and exact equations. You can actually know exactly what these things are, and it's going to bring in a whole new realm of industries, many new industries, because you're going to be able to engineer on the atomic level. You can actually engineer matter the same way you can engineer a building. Honestly, that's amazing. Thank you very much for sharing all of that with us, Randy. I'm, I'm really excited to see how it actually works. You want to convert all that power into electricity and not have convert into heat because you have a lot of heat load to take away. That's sort of limitation. We have a technique that I found actually quite a while ago that was actually proven by Caltech and Kyle Berkeley. They published a paper looking at a black body radiator, a particular carbon furnace, because there's nothing really commercial. Like it fires an open system, so you really can't do this process. But you convert the light into electricity on the first pass in which light doesn't get converted, gets bounced back from the photovoltaic back to the plasma. And plasma is like a perfect absorber. It emits at a certain temperature, but all the radiation incident upon it is absorbed and then converted into light characteristic of that black body. It's kind of like a light bulb. It has a certain temperature and so absorbs it and recycles it. With light recycling, you can get 
not like 5% increase, but five to 10 times more efficiency. So you could get up to 85% efficiency by bouncing the light back and forth between this plasma source and this converter. And it's really simple. You just put a gold atomic layer on the back of the PV. It becomes almost 100% reflective for infrared light. So that's typically light below what they call the fan gap. There's a certain energy of light that you have to be above. Light's comprised of photons. And black body is like a mixture of all photons. It's the white light. You have to be above a certain energy for the voltaic to make electrons and holes take that energy of the light and convert it into electricity. This is, as you said at the very beginning, very disruptive. And you've said that within the following 10, 15, 20 years, perhaps this could potentially mean the end of the grid, as you mentioned. But now with every disruptive technology, there always comes skepticism. And I believe that you have based it during this journey. How do you embrace the skepticism from maybe the public, maybe the scientific community? I don't really worry about it. We have enough money to get this done. And we have about 70 of the world's largest corporations that want to come in and measure it. So right now we're just doing optical power measurements, which is an infallible measurement. We've done a lot. We've done validation on every device we've ever invented. And that's what everybody says. You're never going to beat the internal combustion engine in terms of weight and flexibility and power density, but this blows it away. A lot of people said flight wasn't possible. We I don't agree. really care. We're just doing our job. We're going to make this thing. We're going to have the companies in and then we're going to make it happen. We get in here every day and we build these things. We're running them. We're taking data and we're doing our thing. I believe it is honestly amazing technology. I could continue speaking about the science behind it and learning mm -hmm. about it a lot. Thank you very much. Before I let you go, Randy, before we close this out, you have an, an amazing background. Right. In science, in medicine, in engineering, you have an amazing background, also building up your own company and inventing stuff. Do you have any advice that you would like to give to any young people out there interested in all of these topics, engineering, science, inventions, startups, etc.? Any advice to these people starting their own path? Yeah, I would say focus on physical laws, like regular physics and mechanics and electro electrodynamics, CNM. That's how the universe works. It works by physical laws. The future is so bright, you can't even imagine. This is the best time ever to be an engineer because you're going to be able to do things that are just quite amazing. There hasn't been any really great inventions in 50 years. Everybody talks about that because the physics theories are wrong. And now there's going to be a new paradigm and you're going to be able to make power. You're going to have revolutionary new technologies come out of this and kind of need a lot of people that are bright and are trained. Perfect. Thank you very much for that, Randy. I believe it is the perfect way to close this very brief and introductory conversation about your technology. It's honestly amazing. Thank you very much, Randy, for being here, for sharing your experience, for sharing your thoughts. Where can we find you? Where can we find the Brilliant Light Power? Any social media handles? We have our website. We're at www.brilliantlightpower.com. And, and I'll be a speaker at the Green Summit in New York City on the July 15th. Thank you very much for that. Looking forward to seeing you in that summit. I appreciate that a lot. Remember, guys, also that you can find more information, interesting articles, and interviews directly on our website, controlhole.com slash builder dash nation. We're going to love to hear from you. Thank you very much for being part of this community. We're going to see you next episode. Randy, thank you very much for joining us today. We were so Thank lucky to have you. Take care. Bye.